Hello there everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Prickly Hedgehog. Thanks for tuning in again for another weekly update of news and information coming out of the Eagle Dynamics team and all about DCS World, which is one of our favorite combat flight sims right now, especially if you're into modern aircraft, which uh, as we saw last week, got a nice boost with the Typhoon 2 announcement, the Eurofighter, very, very popular. Thanks for all the comments and discussion points about that aircraft. A lot of people very, very positive about that aircraft. And I did learn a little bit too. There was there was some interesting questions. Uh, remember that uh, they said, one of their developers said that they were in communication with NETMAR, which is the NATO Eurofighter 2000 and Tornado Management Agency. And they also are, as you can tell by the name, responsible for managing the Panavir or the Panavia uh, tornado. Uh, forgive my pronunciation on that. And a lot of people have asked about the tornado and whether or not we would get that. There's an interesting connection there, I thought. No, it means nothing, of course, whether or not we're actually going to get a tornado, but I just thought it was an interesting connection. Uh, the company doesn't look like, uh, you know, they're certainly spending plenty of money on the Eurofighter right now. Last year, apparently 2019, they spent about 53.7 million euro on further developments for the aircraft and there was questions about the price point for the Eurofighter which I did not have at that time but there was a mention by the developer that the price would mimic other Epic Modules class in the game. Now I think this is an internal reference Epic Modules. Not, uh, there's no modules in the game that have been described as Epic as far as I'm aware so it must be an in internal designation and I'm thinking they're referring to things like the F-16, the F-18, uh, the uh, F-14B, of course, which we'll come to in a minute here as well. So that's going to be around about 80 US dollars on that basis. So it's not cheap. Of course, there's always sales and there's always a little bit off if you get the um, pre-release version or pick up a pre-release uh, sale price to, you know, how would you say, uh, sweeten the sweeten the deal a little bit so expect that to be available um well sometime next year i don't i don't see that aircraft being available this year and a lot of people pointed out that the eurofighter wasn't in fact going to be the teaser aircraft that eagle dynamics announced uh last year that there was going to well, earlier this year excuse me that there was going to be a, a new aircraft or a surprise aircraft uh, they said this was not the one. Now, I don't know if that for sure, but that's what it's looking for, looking like. So we are still waiting for this announcement of a surprise aircraft. What that would be, some people are still hoping for the tornado, like I indicated. Some people still believe it's going to be the Phantom 4. And, of course, there's any number of possible guesses after that. But um, those two guesses are pretty good, at least in my opinion. And we'll see what happens. So a little bit of follow-on from last week's excitement about the Typhoon 2. And, of course... Like I said, I'm pretty excited for it. Well, let's turn our attention now to the supercarrier. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I brought you a little video on that. Thanks to WAG's very, very popular module. This is going to revolutionize aircraft carrier operations in any sim. Hands down, I think uh, there's nobody else doing this. So really, uh, Eagle Dynamics have uh, caught on the market, if you like, a little bit with this particular product. Um, this is pretty sophisticated stuff, so if, if Eagle Dynamics pull this off, which I have no doubt they will, uh, real tip of the hat, because it's a pretty complex and sophisticated rendition of a working aircraft carrier deck, which we know, uh, for those of us that are fans of this whole genre, if you like, and this style of uh, aircraft uh, combat, uh, aircraft carriers are highly complex, a lot of moving parts, and... Um, form these days the backbone of the U.S. naval fleet outside of submarine warfare. The extent of reach and control that they can present is phenomenal. It's a floating city, up to six, 7,000 people sometimes on these aircraft carriers. So a lot of, like I said, working parts, a lot of moving parts, very complex, dynamic piece of equipment with uh, a tremendous amount of firepower. So uh, to have this level and these layers of depth in this particular module is absolutely phenomenal. Now, I'm throwing to throw up, obviously, pictures here that you're looking at. In addition to the pictures, there's a couple of other things here. So let's get into what they're saying this week about this module and uh, how it's going to look 
in the weeks coming up. Um, so they've been working hard on the supercarrier. A lot of progress has been made. Full steam ahead, according to the newsletter here. I hope uh, you can hear my wife laughing in the background, so hopefully not too much of that comes through. Uh, hangars, night lighting, and ground crew are receiving a lot of attention, as well as the F-18 AI behavior in the pattern on approach and also in the stack. We're also working on uh, working hard on a set of instructional videos that will help kickstart your naval warfare operations exercise. So, a lot is, like I said, a lot of complex moving parts in that. Uh, getting the aircraft um, into an approach, getting into the stack, and then getting the uh, the break deck queue to then form up and head in to make a proper landing on the aircraft carrier deck, which is no mean feat, even in a case one carrier landing when the weather is fine and you can see the deck. Uh, I don't know how these guys do it at night for real. It's absolutely phenomenal. So, special skill. All right, they have been working hard, like I said. Super carrier development has been progressing at a steady pace. We wanted to show off two areas that many people have been asking about. That includes the hangar area, so the basic structure has been completed, and also night lighting uh, to, to provide an immersive nighttime experience. We are working on the addition of glow sticks and aircraft light flash signals Vests also have reflective patches, and of course, uh, Wax is working on uh, instructional videos, and you'll find more on his channel. So if you want to check that out, I'll uh, try and add a link to that as well, so you can check it out for yourself. Uh, and that's pretty much it in terms of news. Like I said, I'll leave up the uh, images for you to continue to look at. There's quite a few. Let's look at what else is going on right now. So stay at home. The Warbirds free and safe. Free and save, excuse me, stay at home sales going on right now. Uh, there's still time to check out some other things. They've got the Mustang yet, the FW190. Uh, the Mustang's going to be this weekend, really, and finishes on Saturday. The BF109, the Persian Golf map, Nevada map, F86, the MiG 15, and the Black Shark is going to round out everything, as I said to you last week. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of news. Um, I've been trying to get some flying in myself and um, had a little, tried to have a little tinker with some multiplayer. I signed up for a couple of guys that I, I think I've mentioned this guy before, DCS Debrief does some really good videos. Um, he put me onto Tactical Pascal's channel and who's very positive about how to do certain things um, and has some instructor experience as well and was promoting uh, multiplayer. I did try to dabble into multiplayer the other day but I wasn't successful at getting linked up properly there was some sort of issue where I was I was not able to uh, well basically I had massive amounts of lag and I wasn't able to fly so I had to shit can that and <laughs> do something else never mind still plenty of things to do in the solo component of the game including practicing air, -air refueling which is a nightmare especially in the F-14 I find it very very challenging every time I think I have it uh, nailed something happens but so a little bit more practice anyway enough waffle thank you again for tuning in I didn't want to make this too much longer, but oh, before we go, we do have to discuss the F-14B. Yes, sorry, I had it on my notes here. Now, um, Heat Blur produced a little couple of videos, and nothing to do with the F-14B, actually. To do with the F-14A, um, so Tomcat related, but they have showcased the... F-14A, which is a work in progress, and they had us look at a couple of startup procedures here and also a takeoff using the afterburners in the F-14A. Remember that the A variant is less powerful, has the different engines in. Off the top of my head, I forget the name of the engines, but they are nowhere near as powerful as the B variants. And um, yeah, so that's why you sometimes see uh, carrier launches like in Top Gun, where the afterburners were in fact engaged. Uh, that was because, generally speaking, the uh, uh, aircraft shown as the A, not the B variant, which you couldn't do um, with afterburners because there's so much velocity from the engines, you'd start tearing up parts of the deck and damage stuff, blow things uh, away. You'd also damage the runways on a um, um, shore-based takeoff as well. So th that's the difference there. Little point of you know, reference. So, again, uh, I will throw a link into that as well so that you can check those out for yourself. Again, I hope you guys are all doing well. Carry on flying. This is Prickly Hedgehog out for this week. I will see you next time. Thanks for tuning in again, and I really appreciate all the likes, subscribes, and comments. Take it easy, guys.